Hey YouTube, J.P. Dillon. Today we're going to look at something that you don't often see very uh, much around here anymore. Uh, this is a 1985 AOC, uh, which stands for Admiral Overseas Corporation. Now, sometime in the 1970s, when Admiral fell on hard times, they started outsourcing a lot of their production to Taiwan, uh, parts of China, and uh, the quality kind of went so-so. Some of their sets were good and others were not. But uh, most of these things hit the dumpster. You don't see them very much anymore. So it's it's kind of a, a cool thing to see one of these floating around. Uh, let me spin it around and show you the information on it. So it's a model number C3720A with the chassis number M3C2-1B2. And you can see here it's May 21st, 1985. Made in Taiwan, product of AFC International. Uh, so I picked this up. It was in otherwise dusty but very nice shape, and it still had the original uh, little dealer tag th here that you can read over. Your new solid state engineered television is equipped with automatic fine tuning, blah, blah, blah. Your instrument is also equipped with automatic color, yada, yada, yada. And then, you know. Uh, antenna adjustment precaution. It's, this is kind of amusing. Never rotate, swivel, or move the antenna from an upright position. If the rod is not in line with the slots, antenna damage may result. So, uh, this ran at the estate sale, but I'm just going to kind of open it up, show you the insides. We'll do a little bit of a, a clean and tweak and maybe check over some things, and then we'll fire it up and do the setups on it. Uh, kind of neat. You don't see these around very much, so let's get it apart. Okay, so here it is with the back off. You can see this one's in pretty nice shape. There's not a lot of dust and grime in here. But that board's packed. You can see there's lots of ICs. There's your big jungle IC back there. Your IF strip. Uh, this looks like a regulator. And then over here, you've got your horizontal out and your vertical out, flyback, and it looks like they use a spark gap method for the uh, focus. As far as their adjustments, you've got three bias and two drive. Let's see which drives we have. It's hard to really tell here. Let's, uh, Shed some light on it. Okay, so we got red and blue drive. So that means that the green drive is fixed. Yeah. It may not even need a grayscale adjustment. It's got a Phillips 13 VAT P22. Let's take a look and see if the uh, solders on the board are worth anything. They're okay. I might do some touch-up work here. Let's see if we can get up a little bit closer. Yeah, some of those have got signs of ring around the lead, so we may uh, touch that up. Control panel is easily accessible to clean the switches and stuff. The tuner, like a lot of Hitachis and others, comes right out as a whole piece, it looks like, so that's easy to clean. Let's uh, flip it up on its front and check the underside of the board. So all in all, it doesn't look too bad. I don't see any really bad soldering here in the power supply or around the flyback. All looks pretty good. It's one of those giant monolithic slide-out boards. But looking at it nominally, even in areas where the power supply is, the soldering still looks really clean. So it's probably not been used much. I am going to go over the neck board a little bit just because it looks like it kind of needs it. Uh, these little rings around the leads here are a sign that uh, trouble is ahead if you don't resolder them. Yeah, let's see, 33 at 160, it's probably your boost filter. Lots of little pots and stuff back there to tweak, but I think we'll resolder the neck board, clean all the pots and switches, and fire it up. It's got a vertical size, horizontal hold 
vertical hole that's your only controls from the back. So there it is. Spiffy. Alright. Well, I'm going to do the solder rework on the uh, neck board. And then we'll uh, fire it up and see what adjustments, if any, need to be done. This looks like a pretty low hour set, though. So let me do that and we'll get this thing fired up and see how it looks. Okay, so I did some soldering on the neck board and I cleaned the pots. So we're going to see if it uh, needs anything else. Yep, helps to plug it in. Alright, dumbass disengaged, let's find out. Alright, we obviously got some vertical roll going on. Okay, okay. Well, right away I can see that the grayscale looks pretty good. So I don't think I'll need to do anything there. Convergence looks pretty good too. Okay, let's go for a finer pattern. Yeah, that looks good. That looks even better. Convergence is pretty awesome. Okay, so let's uh, let's see fine tuning. Auto color is probably going to make it way too wonky. Uh, all right, color bars. That looks all right. It's pretty bright. We're kind of missing our red shift, though. Yeah, that's a little better. You really got to move that tin control way over, though, to get the uh, proper red. Let's go to the rainbow pattern and see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks okay. So, I mean, all in all, it really doesn't even need any adjustments. Um, let's see here. I'm over to the dots. Now that it's starting to warm up, it's getting a little dimmer. But that's really, I don't care about that too much. I got plenty of brightness range. Uh, let's see here. Super fine dots. And what I can do is I can try to get the focus a little bit better, but I don't even think it really needs it. Come on, let me get this. Uh, Set up and we'll go tweaky tweaky. You can get it better. Wow. Uh, let's go back to our crosshatch. Uh, okay. Huh. That's pretty sharp. Your static convergence on the red blue is a little off there as we can see you got a little bit of red on the left and a little bit of blue on the right but you know whatever you can never make these in lines perfect you can make them pretty good but not perfect and I'm definitely going to need to change the batteries in this soon because it's getting a little cranky or maybe that was fine tuning the fine tuning on this is like super broad that tuner is still a little dirty. I like how you can mess with it. Uh, Alright. It's hard to see because of what the camera is doing. You really have to go to the rainbow pattern to see the really good, really decent color reproduction there. We'll get a real raster on it and we'll see how it looks in a minute. I noticed that the longer it's on, uh, the black level seems to decrease a little bit I can bring that up a little with the screen yeah it's still let's get a real picture on it and see how it looks alright so with a real picture on it looks pretty decent it's very bright I had to turn the contrast down the majority of the way 
I'm not really thrilled with the uh, DC restoration on it. But, you know, it's kind of a cheapy set. Uh, let's see. The formatting actually looks pretty good as is. Tweak maybe the uh, vertical size a little bit. Oh yeah, we did have quite a bit of overscan there. Alright. So that's sized up a little better. It's still within... Uh, the width is a little bit wider than I'd like, but there's no adjustment for that. No B voltage adjustment on this either. You get what you get. But as you can see, it looks pretty decent. I mean, the tube on this is like really sharp. All these stations that you can only get if you stand in the right spot. Digital's kind of useless around here. We top of, topographically we're useless for TV. This is up on a plateau and we still have issues getting most of the local stations. So unless you've got a really tall rooftop antenna, good luck. But it's looking good. Nice and bright. Good color reproduction. The DC restoration is a little sloppy, but it's kind of a cheap set, so I'm not really going to worry too much about it. There's your local CBS affiliate. All right, so it's looking good. A little bit of overscan on the sides there, but not much I can do about that. So yeah, that's that. So I hope you guys enjoy this little short video. You don't really see these AOC sets much anymore. Most of them have probably all hit the dumpster. So. This one will likely find a new home. I've got a lot of these sets from the 70s and 80s that I'm just kind of plowing through. And uh, I'm really into collecting those old 60s metal tabletops, which I've got lots of too, but uh, it's a time thing. So anyway, more stuff to come, and thanks for watching.